Hold on tight, on tight for the, for next, the next hour. hour. You're, entering You're entering into a place, a zone called, called the alternative to the alternative media. media. It's a place, a special place, where even truth seekers fear to tread. Fine, people, let's move like we've got a purpose. Affirmative. Okay, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, people of all races, colors, and creeds, welcome back to the greatest show on earth. <laughs> I mean, this is the investigative journal here on firstamendmentradio.com and we are the greatest show on earth because it is better than having to listen to that boring mainstream media go on and on telling you all these false all these lies about wearing a mask covid virus is going to be going on forever and you will be our slaves basically that's what they're saying and they're saying listen to us we will tell you what to do and then you know what happens after you want to get a little bit of a breather then they put on some stupid story like today is mickey mouse's 166th birthday or 666th birthday and you know i'm so tired of that mouse aren't you i mean you wonder why america's in trouble we have a fake mouse that we celebrate. I mean, the, the mouse is not real. The hell with the mouse. You know, kill the mouse. Well, has he got COVID-19 now? Well, we all do. I know some get rid of the mouse. I don't care. <laughs> but anyway, one thing, you know, we always did have in common as human beings is that we all know we're going to die. You know, the question is when, how, what. But now that's been solved even by our rulers of evil. They're telling us exactly what we're going to die from, and that's COVID-19. Yes, we all are going to die from that, so don't worry about it. Yeah, you may get hit by a truck, but it's COVID-19 because you were thinking about it. Yes, you are in trouble, America, but you know, this show is better. Better than having to live around a whole bunch of people who wouldn't even have a chance to be in the mafia because they're snitches. You believe this? They're telling on people who don't socially distance. And I am so tired of seeing these people with masks on. I don't care. You have the right to wear them. But why didn't you wear them before COVID-19? Because, you know, an outbreak of the flu was more dangerous than this. That's what doc some doctors who aren't on the government payroll are telling us. You know, this is going to be a bit of a weird show. Let me tell you why. I'm here at my studio in the Replica Roman Coliseum. Yes, it's in a Kansas cornfield. And I've got a cup of coffee in front of me because I have been kept up the whole night by drones. Yes, they're surveilling this place. And I'm telling you, they had lights on. They were playing music to keep everybody awake here. Poor Molly the Pigeon who is our trusty messenger in this age of surveillance. The only way to get messages across is through uh, carrier pigeons. And Molly's recovering from an accident after she was at Georgetown University. And guess what Slats did? Yes, he uncovered some of the trinkets that we need to break this Jesuit curse so that everybody can get back to normal, including those actors who I think are getting paid to say they have COVID virus, you know? Why don't you come and pay me? I want $50,000. I'll go on the air and say, yeah, I've got COVID virus, wear a mask, and I have no symptoms. But save the world. Do you think they're getting paid? I don't know. It's a question. Some actors have been asked that, and they said no. Well, what are they going to say? Yeah, we lied. But that's a good question, because why would Tom Hanks come out early on, unless you knew he was a Vaticanite, somebody that's on the New World Order payroll? And that's for sure. When he, I knew that exactly when he made that Angels and Demons movie, and that is the movie that kind of depicted the Vatican as fighting the evil Illuminati, when in fact they are the Illuminati. But, you know, they twist everything, twist and turn, till they have their way. 
So anyway, I'm sitting here with no sleep. These drones have been going over. I was wondering what they're going to do, maybe drop a bomb, but that's not how they're taking over the world these days. They used to do that in old wars, you know, like uh, FDR, he knew, I think, that uh, Pearl Harbor was going to be attacked. And all of these orchestrated wars were kind of, you know, interesting. You were always looking up to see if you're going to get bombed. Uh, many people were sent overseas to die, not knowing the reasons they were sent. But they were told it was patriotism. And I think many of our Viet Vietnam veterans told us the truth when they really learned why we were over there. Perhaps on orders of the Jesuit general to kill all the Buddhists. We can't have anybody in this world who does not support Pontifus Maximus in Rome. That's probably where we are at. So here I am without a lot of sleep, so I decided to listen last night. Well, just to set the record straight, Slats, the only thing I've got out of Molly is that he's been abducted. He Molly brought back the trinkets, and I didn't tell you this, but there's another carrier pigeon that had the helper, and then a flock came in. That That's Eddie the carrier pigeon. He calls himself Eddie, but really, he told me the other day, my name is Adolfo, okay? Adolfo, okay. So we will call him by his proper name. I thought it was Eddie. You know, it's hard sometimes. These pigeons, when they come to Kansas, just like in that movie A Wizard of Oz, they speak, you know. Kansas has a funny thing about that, you know. Dorothy lived in Kansas, and she was sent off to that wonderful world and met the Wizard of Oz. But when you come here, you'll find that pigeons do speak, so they brought back the trinkets. They were hermetically sealed. They're not to be opened. And one was a rather large one. And a flock of pigeons, it was, a, it was a beautiful sight. You had to watch this. Ten of them were carrying this book. And I wonder what that is. Is that the secret book? Did he get that from the Jesuits that was passed down from the Knights Templars? If we have that, we may not even need to go to Rome and get the other things we need from the obelisk from the catacombs, from the Vatican archives, I've been told we have to do this. <laughs> I'm reading some old notes. We have to go to the Vatican archives and get some things. And then you make this big, huge pot, I guess, and then we break the curse. And that is what the second revolution is all about. It's not about fighting with guns. We're outmanned. We're outgunned. We're out-propagandized. Yes, they have their media working in force now to get this country to submit to the, what they call the radical left or the socialist left. And, you know, it's fun to watch the mainstream news on the right. Bellyache and complain. Yesterday I was watching a little bit. Before I took cover from these drones, and I'll get to that in a second, however... Uh, they were belly aching about uh, there is no freedom of speech anymore, and that the radical left is forcing people to submit to their views. They don't want to negotiate, they don't want to talk, they don't want to express views that are contrary to them, conservative views. And now the right is belly aching. Well, we've been belly aching for 30 years. The, both the left and the right don't want to hear what we have to say. What the, many of the people are learning regarding the ruling class, the puppets, the puppet masters, above the puppets. Now, you know, the only people in the world, I've said this a number of times, who really believe in these conspiracy theories are those who really have studied it. Yeah, once you study these things, you find out that they're the ones spreading the conspiracy theories, and you're actually on to the truth. You know, and they, uh, listen to this. We can make Jesuit connections to hell freezes over, and people are just not going to listen to it. And I can tell you that for a fact, because years ago I used to sit there and give you the real, and I'll do that for you again maybe, but give you the real bio of Joseph Stalin, the real bio of Father Edmund Walsh in, in Georgetown University, the real, real bio of Dwight D. Eisenhower, and the real bio 
of some of these people behind the scenes that never really, well, some are put there to take credit and others hide behind the scenes and are so humble. But did you know even Bill Clinton, you know, his favorite professor at Georgetown Jesuit University was Carol Quigley, a Jesuit, right? And he wrote a book in 1966 called Tragedy and Hope. And he said that the multitudes were already under control of a small but powerful group, bent on world domination. And like I've said many times, when you get people know they're being propagandized by the mainstream media, we know both sides are working together, the left and the right, to bring about this global order. And we also know that when you try to search for more things on the Internet and get to the problems, for example, many Internet sites for the years strive to identify the conspiratorial factions, don't they? They talk about Freemasons, they talk about the Skull and Bones, CIA, Mossad, Trilateral Commission, the Committee of 300, the many, many, many places, and Skull and Bones, the, uh, the Jews, the whole thing comes out. And what you find is that there's so much information that you get confused, and then they have infiltrators that take over the alternative media, like Alex Jones and some of these guys. Uh, and so you have a hard time even getting the truth there. So it becomes quite a task these days, even though we have more information at our fingertips than any other generation known to man. But it seems, if you really look back in history, in the early, late 1800s, even go back to the early 1800s, and then in the early 1900s, they didn't have any of these fancy things like we do, like the Internet and all this technology. But it seems, if you read closely, they, they knew more about this subject than we do. And the only thing you can surmise from that is that the rulers of evil write history, so they constantly are erasing it, correct? And so you get little and little and little, and the little you do find, you find that you're on the short end of the stick, and they were right when I heard yesterday on some of these left-wing, right-wing shows that there is no freedom of speech because this has been a slow process to quelch any kind of discussions like we have. Like, you know, Joseph Stalin was actually trained at Tiflis, which is a Jesuit uh, school in Russia. Oh, but Russia, they were kicked out of Russia. They couldn't. Well, yeah. What do you think they overthrew the Tsar for? They never really left. They still hid out. And they had a lot of support. And, you know, some of the support came from the United States in the form of cash, in the form of, you know, secret agents going over there to work with Stalin. One was Father Edmund Walsh. He went over there on a bogus trip to basically feed the Bolsheviks who were starving. Yeah, feed them with dollars and get Stalin involved so we could kill off 30 million Orthodox Christians in the name of, oh, you know something? We had to, this man just got totally out of control. He is a mass murderer. Yeah, because they trained him. <laughs> oh, what a story that is. But you can't get that anywhere. You can't even get on the right-wing media who their owner is and what he really is about. Rupert Murdoch runs that place. He's a knight of Malta. That's the lay arm of the Jesuits. If you know anything about the Jesuits, they're up to no good. And we try to bring that out here. We try to actually give them credit for what they've done. I mean, all of you globalists out there, man, give these guys some credit. You're following in their footsteps. They created socialism for you back in the 1600s. They helped bring America, you know, to where it is today. Yes, constantly. They created, you know, the biggest civil war ever. They helped do that. And, you know, you want to tear down these people. They, they want to tear and see what they're doing now. This is really interesting because this is how, you know, communist countries fall or turn into socialism is 
exactly what they're doing now here. They're racing history. They're taking down statues. Everybody's belly aching. Well, they don't even know what they are. That's not important to them. Because if you take everything away, then you start from scratch and you build this kind of socialist country they want, which means you have no rights. You don't have any now. Can you imagine what it's going to be like when they take over? And as far as these statues, you know, I talk a lot about signs and symbols and everything. Please, someone out there tell me why there's fascist symbols behind the U.S. House of Representatives podium of the speaker. Shouldn't they put nice little, you know, symbols of freedom? Well, their symbol of freedom is that 555-foot obelisk out there, which actually is a uh, worshiping statue to Isis, you know, a phallic symbol. If you go into the story of Isis, why did they name the terrorist group Isis? Did you, did you ever think about that? They worship these gods. The obelisk in Rome, it's a, it's a phallic symbol too, 666 feet. And then we have one in London, the triumvirate of evil. And they're all not part of the country they live in. You know, they said in Rome is separate, right? Or the Vatican is separate from Italy. Washington, D.C. is separate from the United States. And the London area, the city of London there, is, there's a part of London where the, that is not a part of the city of London in England. And they have a flag. And basically behind the scenes, they have been planning what's happening now in COVID-19 for a long, long time. And this is just the beginning of what you're up to. For example, let me give you an example. Why do you think now, if you look really deeply, a lot of the stores, retail stores in America are going out of business. They're not restocking their shelves. China is now not shipping to the United States. Why? Because they know there aren't going to be that many people there anymore. Why about a year ago, before this whole thing hit, did you have this mass exodus of CEOs in America? All of a sudden, like 550 of them decided to retire. Really? But if you go right across the border, you know, what you have here in Mexico, you know, and I know well because I stay there a lot when I'm not in the replica Coliseum, China's still shipping to Mexico. The shelves are full, and they're over full. Why? People from America are going to have to come here, and they'll say, we shouldn't have built that wall. It's crazy. But anyway, here we are in the replica Roman Colosseum, and I want to finish this regarding Carol Quigley, and you'll see that a lot of these people that these guys honor are Jesuits. For example, Hillary Clinton's mentor is a Jesuit priest named Pierre de Chardin. He is the father of the New Age movement. Speaking of signs and symbols, what's up on the Capitol building, folks? Oh, is it a f representation of freedom? No, it's Persephone. It's a Greek or Egyptian or whatever, one of their gods up there. Yeah, when it was put up, you know, Lincoln didn't even want to come out of the White House for the ceremony. He knew what was going on. And he did mention that if America is going to be taken over, it will be taken over by the very people in this show we talk about. And when you look into the murder of Abraham Lincoln, the assassination, you'll find the Jesuit and Vatican hands, all bloody hands all over it. But we still do business with them, right? Oh, yeah. Because the more we move, the more we are distracted. Distracted from this fake, Ill, fake flu that they got going around. Then we're distracted with Black Lives Matter. Now listen to this. People are going to yell and scream if Trump gets, you know, pardons Michael Flynn, who's been framed, you know, the general who was opposed to Obama. But did you know, when you start looking at what Clinton did, that it, it makes him look like a mafia boss, Clinton, but nothing said. They love him. For example, when Clinton went to uh, Mount Rushmore, it was the greatest thing since sliced bread. But when Trump went there, because he represents America, and people from middle class, white people, and everybody here that love, not only white people, but black people and everybody that want to see America prosper. It was white supremacy, you know. That's how they depicted it. 
Same thing when Obama went. It was great that he visited Mount Rushmore, but when Trump does, well, forget about it. So, anyway, it's interesting that these symbols, for example, Persephone up there, why? Statue of Liberty is full of all of these occult symbols, but nobody talks about that. But that's what they stand for. And, you know, if you tear the... I don't say... I've said I'd love to have a company that does tours to show you all the occult symbols that are all over the Supreme Court building, all over the Capitol building, and all over the state houses, in every park and everywhere. It'd be a great business. But if you tear them down, I'm going to get a. I, how can I run my business? And in fact, I don't want you to tear anything down because that's a point of reference. <laughs> you know? But they want to rip it all down. Then you have no point of reference, right? You have no place to build. For example, you see a Confederate statue and you go, wow, you know, I don't believe in slavery. But then you start looking deeper and see where the slavery was coming from and you start understanding that people today don't want that. Maybe there are some of these goofy rulers of evil that do because they want to enslave us all. In fact, did with the 14th Amendment. And that's a whole different ballgame, you know, that we've discussed in years past. But everything goes in one ear and out the other in radio. Like I said yesterday, radio is a great medium. You can, for example, create pictures in your mind when I talk or when another radio broadcaster that's more eloquent speaks. You can actually see those pictures in your mind, the greatest motion picture house in the world, your mind. But what they're trying to do to you with this no freedom of speech, and we've, that on this side of the, on the third side of the coin, which is this side, you know, it's the side where we don't take the left and the right and join one of their teams. We think on our own. And if we may be right in some, we may be wrong, you want to get these things out on the table. There's enough facts to get the discussion that the Vatican is involved with controlling our foreign domestic policy in some way or another, but you can't even discuss it. Because, for example, a friend of mine on First Amendment Radio, I haven't talked to Tom Fress in a while, and others are basically giving you a very good show about the spiritual side, the biblical, anti-biblical side of the Vatican. And they have been censored by YouTube, and they've classified it as hate speech. What is hate speech? Do they remember the Protestant Reformation? That's what pro you Protestants out there, you should be coming to Tom Fress and First Amendment Radio's side. You should be screaming to the mountaintops, especially all of you that say you're Christian Protestants, but really don't even understand that the Jesuits have infiltrated your churches, and Tom and these people at First Amendment have been trying to tell you that for years. And I lend a few, my two cents in on it every now and then. And they have been censored. Hate speech in America, what is that? It's not hate speech. Back in the day when the Jesuits were formed to kill Protestants, the protest was against the Antichrist Vatican. Read your history and read what the Bible really says. But that's hate speech now because it's talking against Pontifus Maximus. So that's what's going on. And when you see these left, these right-wing journalists start talking about there's no freedom of speech because we can't get our conservative values across, why don't they come to the aid of people like him? Because they work for Rupert Murdoch. And it's all a front. They have to play the Hegelian dialectic to get the global order. And in the second half hour, I'm going to give you what we heard last night since I was up all night with these drones flying over. And I had to listen to the bug that we placed in that tunnel between Georgetown and the White House where they have their secret meetings. And boy, did we learn some things last night. And they're going to be very useful for the American Second Revolution once we break this curse. It can't be anything else but a curse. And it'll be beautiful when it's broken. So, like Trump would say, it'll be a beautiful thing. Back in three minutes on <laughs> the Investigatore Journale. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart 
of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. The following the program, program is labeled dangerous, dangerous and off limits by the Supreme, by the Supreme Jesuit, Jesuit Command. command. But stand tall, people. people. Listen, Listen up, up, and, up, and, up, and you, you may, may just, just learn, learn something. something. Oh, dear Lord Jesus, this ain't happening, man. This can't be happening, man. This ain't happening. Okay, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, sit back, uh, ladies and gentlemen, people of all races, colors, and creeds, second half hour of the investigative journal. Yes, we are. We are the greatest show on earth because it's better. Better than listening to the esteemed, or should I say full of hot air, Harvard lawyer Alan Dershowitz tell us. We have no constitutional right to refuse to be COVID-19 vaccinated. <laughs> Oh, boy. He's a constitutional lawyer, too. And you probably pay him $10,000 an hour to give you that, you know, bogus claim. But, you know, people will believe it, and most people will line up for a fake vaccination and keel over 20 seconds later. It's also better than listening to Tom Hanks. Yes, he actually said this. He gave, wrote a big article. He tells us that he has, quote, no respect for anyone who does not wear a mask. Okay. Tom, by the way, what kind of mask? Are you talking about the Lone Ranger mask? Right? Are you? Really? But I don't have any respect for you anyway, so who cares? And who cares? You don't care if I have respect for you, so why should I care if you have respect for me? And secondly, I don't respect anybody who dresses up like women in their movies, right? That is a rite of passage in Hollywood. If you're a star, you've got to dress up as a woman. Now, why? If you're a male star. I guess if you're a female star, you've got to dress up as a man. I don't have any respect, and it's it's goofy, but anyway, they do it. <laughs> we already talked about that stupid mouse. Better than listening to the mainstream media update all of these fictional characters, their birthdays. Today was the 99th birthday of Pluto the elephant, or whatever. They keep going, the fake elephant, you know. But anyway, got some information about the Vatican. This is so interesting, folks. It's better than having to listen to this stuff. Well, it isn't. You don't get it anywhere else. Why isn't the news, why isn't the media reporting this? 
Okay, we know everybody's crying out, oh, China is taking over Hong Kong. Hong Kong has no rights. Business will not be done. They won't allow people to talk there. Ye, basically, you will be arrested if you talk against the Communist Party. And then nobody's saying, and we love the Vatican here, right? We love the Pope. We stand, when the Pope comes here, the Vatican, we stand up for civil rights. Yeah, well, how come you don't do it in Hong Kong? You know why? There's a book out in Italy right now, and it traces that Hong Kong has been, I mean, China has been giving the Vatican about $2 billion a year in payments since 2013. That's why they're not coming out in front of it. So when the Vatican comes here and says they're for freedom, and then they support China, don't believe them. Go get the information. In fact, on my show tomorrow, on my other show, on CRN, I'm going to have somebody from Italy talk about that. And that's on CRN at 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific Time, CRN3, Channel 3. It's at crntalk.com. And tonight, by the way, on that show, I have somebody from Mumbai, India, who wrote an exhaustive study of COVID-19. It's an incredible citizen's view of it. And man, I want to bring him on, and he is in Mumbai, and we're going to learn a lot about what happens in, in, in India now. I'm looking forward to that. But anyway, on a serious note, we forget sometimes, you know, on this show, we do a lot of laughs. Sometimes we get serious. And we bring out information in a way that hopefully people that don't understand this stuff will stick around and listen. But there's always a time when you have this COVID-19 fake pandemic thrust upon you. You start looking at other countries and, you know, we've presented videos with many doctors who disagree with Fauci and the merry band of sorcerers there at the White House. But we all forget the toll this is taking on people. And how many unnecessary deaths are being, you know, taking place because of this? And that's really their goal. The reason they have you wearing masks is so you'll get sicker. And most people won't even look and protect themselves. But please, if you're going to wear one, get both sides of the story. Not just what they tell you, but most people won't. And the funny thing is, once people listen, they're going to believe the people on TV anyway. They'll believe Sean Hannity over an esteemed doctor because he's on Fox. Or they'll believe Mario Cuomo or whoever he is on CNN. Don't believe these talking heads on things like that. He's not a doctor. He's following Rupert Murdoch's orders, which aren't good in the long run. They may seem nice now. But anyway, and we've got to look at something. Let's look back to April. Remember 11-year-old Landon Fuller? I didn't till I looked it up again and was made aware of this, but Landon was from Albuquerque. 11-year-old kid, at the end of April, distraught by the schools closing, nowhere to go, and the New Mexico lockdown where he couldn't even go out and play. He took his own life. He committed suicide at 11. Oh, and Dr. Fauci, he does, they don't talk about this. Oh, the blood, the beautiful blood of children. Yeah, that's what they're really thinking. In New Mexico, they've, you know, there's a study since COVID-19. The There's been a 20% increase in the unexpected deaths since COVID cases. And the unexpected deaths are basically like uh, suicides, car accidents, etc. And these are skyrocketing as as is you know, domestic violence and other things that go into being locked down like a rat. Yeah. So, anyway, come back in the days to come. We'll talk a lot about uh, how this really works. Uh, you know, I love the signs and symbols because we can go on for hours about all of them. We gave you a few in the first half hour. But think about this. The UN is nothing but a cesspool of occultism, globalism. And we revere, you hear our politicians, oh, we got to listen to the UN. I can give you one quote, and uh, I don't have it right at my tips, but Brock Chisholm, I think he was the head of the World Health Organization, 
basically stated in 1991 that we'll never get to a new world order unless we get rid of nationalism, unless we get rid of the family unit, unless we get rid of people actually thinking on their own. He came out and say, say, says this stuff, and you don't, you don't think, and you still follow what the WHO says? Come on, people. Don't listen to them. You've got to open up things because they are going to take your mind, your body, and your soul right from you if you don't okay so here we are in the replica coliseum i'm on bad night's sleep chugging down coffee and in the nighttime since the drones were keeping me up i turned on the bug we put a fly on the wall a mechanical fly on the wall in that tunnel between Georgetown University and the White House, where they actually strategize the New World Order. They give the actors who are playing the biggest parts in this, Congress, of course, the big guys there that do the talking to the press, as well as to Trump and the rest of them to go out and you know do their daily show. It's basically a reality show, like you see on TV, but there's got to be a director. His name is Luigi Franconi, a director, a Jesuit priest who then goes to his other Jesuits, and uh, they give him the script for the day. They have writers, just like in a Hollywood movie. They even have a director's chair for him. It's got Luigi Franconi on it. Trump, of course, gets his own chair, like the stars, the star on the back. He wanted two stars. And they all, the top guys, get their chairs, you know, so when they're actually listening or they're on hiatus between a scene, they come down and have a cup of coffee. It's like a green room, too. You know, they provide good food for the stars the extras aren't allowed down there no and basically there are day players which are more you know they're on their team then a lot of the extras are us we just are there and we've never gotten paid for over i've been an extra and there were movie for god knows how many years and i think what they're doing is they're sending out these checks to everybody as they should just say they're your ex pay for being an extra in our movie thank you but in hollywood they pay better it's 50 to 100 dollars a day there imagine if you added up all the years you've been on earth and asked for that pretty good sum right so anyway i turned it on and i've got some startling information last night and trump was down there and we finally settled it. Biden came down for a brief appearance. He, he, they send them in at the, the, during night times, you know. During the night, they send these people in so you don't know what they're doing. Biden was there. And I'll get to that in a minute. But it reminds me, this is, this is interesting because remember way back when George Bush, the father, was in office? And you know his occult uh, dealings at uh, Bohemian Grove and all these other sadistic things they talk about these people you know and i was always a little skeptical but one day it's this crazy story i was working my way through school and i was working selling rvs at the time and i met one of the salesmen was a marine an ex-marine and his assignment was he was one of the guys that was on the marine helicopter that flew the president around and so we started talking, and I remember him telling me this. He said, yeah, I remember some nights he worked during the George Bush administration. Funny how you, you get information, you know. It starts to all come together. He said it was the craziest thing, but it'd be like 1 in the morning, and George and Martha, was that, was that her name? Marsha, what's his name? George Bush and his, you know, wife. Martha Bush? I forget. But anyway... He said they used to call the helicopter. We'd have to go out. They'd always come out with a couple six-packs. They'd get in the helicopter, and we would take them somewhere in this field. It was kind of like a forest. And they would get out, go somewhere with a couple bodyguards, and we'd be there for a few hours. Then they'd come back, and we'd get them there before dawn. So what the heck were they doing in a big field or a forest drinking beer at 2 in the morning? <laughs> true story I mean the crazy information you get so anyway last night people have been asking me who's gonna win the election hundred and what 17 or 18 days first of all I said it's not an election it's a selection 
They've already selected the one. So, okay, Greg, who have they selected? You know, and then they said, are you going to vote? I said, I've never voted in my life, ever. Step foot in a voting booth. And I wouldn't say that I was, uh, you know, a prognosticator of the New World Order when I was 18 or 19. I just didn't give a damn back then. I was a football player, so I didn't want to vote. I, hell with it all. Then as a, when I became a journalist after that, I thought it unfair, not true, not right to vote for a party because I wanted to be non-biased, so I didn't vote. Then I learned about, really, that voting doesn't count, and it, your votes are just a show, another reality game, an episode they play. So I said, I'm not voting. So it all equals out to I never voted. And that's my right as an American. So... And I've took the critics, oh, you're not a patriot, you got to take part. Take part in what? The reality show? Without even getting my extra pay? No way. So, anyway, that question came up. So last night, guess what? While I was sitting there, worrying that the drones were going to drop something on the Colosseum and demolish it, because they do not want this to happen. Break the curse? Have them be gladiators for us? Give me a break. But anyway... So I'm thinking, oh, another boring night. A lot of times they just go down there and drink beer and wine and get high and then talk about the stupidest things, you know, like, uh, oh, did you read the story about how they used to cut people's heads off and the gods and sacrifice? You know, they get, I mean, it's really crazy stuff. Or they'd say something like, they did say something interesting. Remember Aldo Moro? You probably don't, but he was a, he was a, he was a prime minister of Italy back in 1978 when they killed him. Because that's when they were bringing the strategy attention and using Italy as a test country. I happened to be there in 1979 and 80. Started, I was there for like six, seven years. So I know all about it. And they really set up Italy. And they were testing it out. And did you, you know, they were sitting there and, that, and Kissinger stopped by. And they said, oh, I remember when you were involved in the Aldo Moro assassination. They were laughing about it, you know. So, I mean, these guys were, Kissinger was deeply involved in that strategy attention, the CIA helping, you know, the fascists there, uh, bombings in Bologna, even a bombing in the American newspaper where I was at, and I was almost killed. You know the story if you listen to my show. I'm lucky to be here. That's when I really started wondering, you know, am I doing the right thing? <laughs> and I started researching the Vatican because I said, you know, Boy, the things I'm hearing, there's always a scandal here, a scandal there. I'm almost getting killed by these bombings. Where is it coming from? Found out the American newspaper there was funded by the CIA and that it was an inside job. And one guy in, told me, don't go any farther or you may, <laughs> you might as well have been killed in that bombing. So I kind of stopped a little bit there. Stopped the real heavy research. But anyway, uh, so I'm listening last night thinking I'm not going to hear anything important, and all of a sudden it came out. Yep. They were laughing about, hey, did you see that Simpsons episode, Don? Remember? Oh, yeah. He said, yeah. They had me coming down the yellow, just like we, we planned it, just the same way. In fact, the day before I came down that escalator, I had to watch that to make sure we had all the extras in the right place. And the Melania had to be, you know, five steps behind me, I had to have on my red tie, and uh, they, they were laughing about it. And then they started to get into really what's going on, which tells me who they selected in uh, 118 days. They said, Don, you know, you've been a great actor. And he said, yeah, I tell you, I know I only signed on for one term. And I told you I was getting old. And th the only reason, and Trump was telling everybody, he said, yeah, the only reason I accepted this was one term. And then you got to get me out of this, you know, with dignity. I can't be a loser. I'm not a loser. I'm a winner. And they said, don't worry. We got all that plan. You know what's happening, the COVID virus. We had that plan long before. We told you when you took this job there was going to be a pandemic during your, your end of your first term. That's going to erase all the good things you did. But it's not going to seem like your fault. So they're laughing about it, going, yeah, yeah. And they're going, what are you going to do, Donald, after this is done? And uh, then he said, ah, you know, i got to catch up on some golf and maybe start running my business again. we got a couple things we want to build in China, a couple towers and things. So Don's going to be busy. But anyway, so it told me 
that they've already selected uh, Biden, and they're making him a bumbling idiot to show America what they're really getting. And what they're getting is a guy who can't speak anymore. He's not going to debate Trump. That's for sure. They said that last night. No debates. We're not going to. And Trump said, great. He said, and thanks for this COVID-19. You know, it was getting old, those rallies. And now we're winding down my presidency. And I can go out on a high note, you know, trying to get the economy back. But the poor American people, you know. It was a good gig while it lasted, and I hope I did a good job, he said. I mean, he said, Don, they were, the director, Luigi Franconi, looked him in the eye and said, you know, we've been, we have been controlling presidents and selecting them for a long time, but you, in my book, when I write my memoirs that won't be released till the year 3000, you will be the number one actor that ever took the job as president of the United States. You did a heck of a job, and you're still doing a good job. Now, you only got a few more days, so I want you to go out with a bang, okay? And one of the other guys there said, Luigi, you know, we can rewrite the script if we want to keep him another four years, and Trump just laughed, it's not another four years. So you never know with these guys. They can, you know, we got 118 days. They could rewrite the script. And there are a lot of people out there, you know, putting their money on Trump. But anyway, you got it from the horse's mouth there and the tunnel between Georgetown and the White House where all the real information goes down. And I sat back at the Roman Coliseum going, wow, that's going to be interesting. Now, I've made my prediction based on inside information from the White House. Now, what if I'm wrong? Well, it really doesn't matter because let's say they changed the script the day before the, the selection. You know? And the funny thing about this one is they're going to have everybody voting by mail. Oh, that's going to be a great thing. <laughs> oh, that's another thing they talked about. And they said... And Trump was saying, listen, I got to go out as a winner. You know, I don't want to be considered a loser. And they said, the history books will always make you a winner, Donald. You had no choice. You were the president during a war, a pandemic. And, you know, you had no choice. Your, your economy was fantastic. But we have to make socialism come in nicely. And we're doing it in the best way we can to make you look good and then to bring it in so slyly that people won't even know. We don't have to bomb anybody. You don't have to take a dive and be a loser. And then we can bring in socialism and all the people that really want to take center stage and move this reality show on. You know, Trump said, yeah, don't change the script, please. But they've done it before, so maybe the night before the, election, the selection, they'll call in Donnie and say, hey, we changed the script. You're going to be president again. Oh, my God. I wonder what he'll do. Then some said, one guy st stood up, I don't know who he was, probably an assistant director. He said, hey, can we make Trump resign before this? Maybe if he just resigns, that'll look better. And Trump goes, no, that'll make me look like a quitter. That doesn't go in line with what I did for all those years on my reality show. You know, you're fired. I can't fire myself. But anyway, one guy was thinking, maybe we'll just get him to resign so here we go. We got 118 days to wait who the Jesuits have selected. And from what I hear down in this tunnel, it's uh, going to be the New World Order. And if you think about it, they've been investing a lot of money into this, and they want to push it along by 2030. And uh, what it'll be interesting. Let's say they do, the show goes on, right, with the globalists in power. Oh, boy, are the... Right wing going to go crazy. And maybe they'll have their little civil war. Who knows what they can write into these scripts. But anyway, you're getting it firsthand here, and I hope you enjoy it. Because you're not going to get this anywhere else. And the idea, what's going on with these masks? To end the show, i got a few minutes here. There's a study out that proves that cloth masks significantly increase the likelihood of influenza. 
So by worrying it, of course, you're going to get sick. So those of you who want to do that, that's fine with me. And for those of you who still want to stay home and listen to Governor Newsom in California, Governor Cuomo in New York, etc., and not be like the brave people of South Dakota, think of it this way. I used to know people like you, and in fact, some days I was that way myself. Remember when you were in kindergarten and in first grade and second grade, and you had to go to school, but you didn't want to, so you faked an illness? Oh, you'd wake up and your mom would say, come on, Gregory, get up and go to school. And you go, oh, my, I am so sick, Mom. I can't go. So you make up a thing, you stay home. You know, many kids do that. Many people in America are doing that. They're, they're saying, you know, I'll believe this guy. I don't want to go outside anyway. Too much. You know, they're paying me too much to stay at home. <laughs> so anyway, we have a lot of people playing hooky and listening to the principal tell you, no school today, no work today, you can't open your salon. Remember what happened to that woman that opened her salon? She got arrested, put in jail, then she started a GoFundMe account and made $500,000. She said she was going to give it to charity. Look that story up. All right, you can make money on this thing. Maybe that's what you should do. Don't open your auto dealership. Then open it one day, let Gavin Newsom come down and arrest you, then start a GoFundMe account and make yourself a half million dollars. A lot of ways to make money on this COVID-19. Mine is a new mask, of course. I put a patent in it, and they're working on it now. It's basically a very new finangled clothespin that you put over your nose. You duct tape your mouth, you put it over your ears, every orifice is closed, you will die in four minutes and basically of COVID-19. That will get you, get you out of this thing quickly instead of a prolonged agonizing death by staying home and doing nothing. Back tomorrow on the Investigatory Journale. The book of Revelation says, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today. So you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The prophecy. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188.